What's good? I'm Joey Etch, Double XL Mag, DoubleXLMag.com, Double XL Higher Level Radio 2 with my guy DJ Digital. Hitting you with a special Friday edition of Double XL's The Break Live. I'm pulling up today a true MC in the form of Ruben Vincent. Coming out of Charlotte, North Carolina, Ruben is signed to Jomla Records and Rock Nation. He's in his early 20s, but he's already worked with the likes of Ninth Wonder and Rhapsody. So you already know that's the kind of caliber of rhymer we're dealing with. And I'm here for all of it. Ruben's been dropping a bunch of fire new singles over the past few months. And he doesn't just rap either. He produces beats. He started directing his own videos. And the story of how he got to where he's at is a fascinating one. So he's about to join us. He's in the middle of a new tour with Boss from Dreamville. We're going to chop it up about all that. So let's just see where he's at. Yeah. Uh, what's what's good? What's up? Which, how you doing, man? I'm good. Good, man. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Likewise. It's been a minute. So I'm yes. Joey. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me today. Hella excited to have you here. Appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate you, Joey, man. It's, it's, I remember last time it was right before a whole lot of stuff happened. So yeah, we're back again. yeah. We're still going. So yeah, we still going. Like, uh, like I said, man, uh, I'm 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 happy for all your success. And uh, how are you living today? Man, I'm good. Man, I'm in Portland right now. We got an off day yeah. on the tour, so you know I'm just kind of like I've been on go, on go, on go. So I'm like reconnecting. Uh, you know, back, I'm making beats. I was making beats right before you, uh, literally, uh, hit me. So, you know, just yeah. really, really just trying to get a whole bunch of stuff, man. It's a break day, but it's work day still. So, oh, well, make sure that you hit save. <laughs> nah, thank you for sure. And I'm, and I got to hit the Nike store. We in Portland, so it's only right. All right. All right. No doubt. Well, uh, I hope you get on that <clears throat> quickly. And, uh, how's it been on the road with Boss so far, man? You're about halfway through the tour. Yeah, it's been good, man. Um, so the the way I met Boss was, hey, somebody said Boston ready. Yeah, I can't wait to go to Boston for sure. But um, I met Boss during uh, Dreamville Fest last year, and I walked up to him just like he was walking, like he was walking on his phone, and I was like, yo, my name is Ruben Vincent. And he was like, what's up? He was like, I know who you are. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, let's just like tap in. So, you know, I, I tapped in with him since then. Then I did like a freestyle Friday over uh what's the what's the record Passport Bros yeah. and I sent it to him. I sent it to him because I had his number and he was like yo this is hard and then I remember he had announced the tour and I was like who are you gonna get on the tour like you gotta call your boy and then you know the rest is history so it's been good he showed a lot of love Boz is a real one in the industry you know there's not a lot but Boz is one of the ones for sure what's the temperature been like on the tour you said say it again. The temperature been like out on the stage for the tour. It's been turned. It's been turned. Yeah. It's been turned. San Diego has been my favorite city so far. You know what I mean? Um, San Diego, San Francisco was turned. L.A. was turned. Everywhere has been turned. It's been hot so far. We ain't got no cold weather. Portland by like in the 40s. Okay. But this, this the first uh, weather where it's kind of like a little bit colder. But it's been turned. Every night it's been turned. They've been showing mad love to the music. So, Love to hear that. Make it. Memories for real, right? Thanks. Word. So uh, you mentioned you've had a lot cooking over the past year, especially after dropping Love is War. What's it yeah. been like in general? Man, it's been, you know, the reaction has been really well. I think one thing for me that I've kind of came to terms with, with Love is War, is its place in hip hop in today's time. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think for especially me being in my early 20s and, you know, making the type of album I made. It was very, it was a very dense album, you know what I'm saying? But I think in the long, in the long run, you know what I mean? I think that is going to be a, a very standing, it's going to be a standing project when you talk about projects from, you know, this time. So I think for me, my goal since then is to be and continue to amplify continue to turn it up. I got all the like dick stuff out. Now I want to like, you know, have fun and, you know, experiment and then also show people more size of me. I feel like Love is War, I was really hands on with making sure that th the message that I was trying to get across was getting across. Um, but I feel like moving forward, I've been trying to, you know, implement my African roots a lot more, you know, implement my Southern roots a lot more and just, you know, continue to grow from the first project, but it's been love. Dreamville Fest, 
BET Hip Hop Award. Yeah. Um, you know, being a part of Tidal Rise and Hip Hop DX made me one of their rising artists mm -hmm. last year. And just, mm -hmm. you know, continuing to build in. When I go out, it's funny, when I go out, more people be knowing about me than I be thinking. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, that's always a big, a big thing. Is does that stuff surprise you yeah. when when that, when that kind of thing happens? Yeah. Yes. Like even when I go up to like some of my favorite artists, like Wale or something, and I tell them who I am or try to introduce myself, and they'll be like, "Yeah, I know who you are." Like, like you know, I've been tapped in and stuff like that. Like I think that it surprises me more than anything because I even with Boss, like I used to, I used to be on the bus, drive, like going to high school, listening to Boz, listening to Wale, <laughs> listening to Joey, all these people. And now like, these are people that I talk to, you know what I'm saying? And been in the studio with, so. That's, that's incredible, man. Dope, that's what's up. Yo, for anyone just being put on, we're joined by Ruben Vincent on today's Double XL's The Break. So, yo, for anyone who might be unfamiliar, let's start from the beginning, where are you from? I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. My family's also from West Africa, Liberia. Yes, yeah. and we'll get into that too. So like, how would you describe your childhood coming up? Um, my childhood was pretty smooth. You know what I'm saying? We from, Char being from Charlotte, North Carolina, obviously that's the South, you know what I mean? Um, there wasn't really like a big, 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 big music uh, crowd coming up, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I feel like as, like, especially now, it's been a big renaissance in North Carolina and Charlotte just in general. But, you know, I grew up in an African home, you know, the the pretty much the African-American experience. Grew up in an African home, went to school, you know what I'm saying, got put on by the homies, got put on by my cousins with, you know, with music. And, you know, sneaker culture was also very big back home. Um, you know, I got the best of both worlds. You got the goods and the bads, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So, for sure. sure. Yeah. What about early? Early aspirations as a kid. What did you see yourself doing with your life? Rapping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was, I was, uh, I was um, since a kid. Like my my dad and my mom prioritized, you know, playing a lot of the culture stuff around me. Especially mm -hmm. my dad being early, you know, him coming from West Africa, and then like a lot of stuff that they played was just like pop, big, like you know, while the war was going on. So then. Right. As as time went by, you know, he started playing it for me in my Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? Start playing it for me in the whip when he picked me up for my mom crib. And, you know, so from the beginning, bro, I always wanted to do music. I have a picture of me like two years old with a microphone. You know what I mean? So no, I've always been wanting to do music. Yeah, it's never That's changed. What's up, man? Now, when, when you talk about love is war and, you know, your background and your history and how that project specifically had a lot to do with you being a first generation American, right? Yeah, yeah. Explain explain what that means to you. Being a first generation American yeah. is um I think, you know, we get a certain uh perspective that it's it's a balance. It's a balance of both. You know, you're from here and we're really truly African Americans, at least for the first generation Africans. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like you your parents are from Africa. You live in an African home. You eat the, the food, you know what I'm saying? They play the music. They give you the culture. And then you go to school and, you know what I'm saying, you're dealing with the same things that a, another African-American, a young black person is dealing with on an everyday basis. I think, you know, one thing that I think makes first generations grind so hard is seeing how much sacrifices their parents made to, for them to get here. Like, knowing my parents' history of being in the war, um, knowing the, the, the struggles my mom has made, you know what I'm saying, to, to get to where I'm at. And even, you know, putting a lot of sacrifices in. I'm seeing people putting in the Nigeria flag and the Liberian flag to yeah. resonate. You know, it, it makes us grind hard. It makes us really grind hard and wake up every day and, like, really put in the work because we know where it comes from. You know what I'm saying? So I do. I, th I, think that's, I think that's what's the, the motive behind, you know, a lot of first generations and why they go so hard for what they want. No doubt. Now, do you feel a certain sense of responsibility to incorporate those experiences into your record, into your music? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I feel like, you know, one thing that I've also always thought about is like, you know, hip hop is continuously growing. And granted, I come from, you know, like you said, I come from the ninth wonders of the world. I come from the rap cities of the world, like true hip hop peers, young gurus. But how am I going to separate myself from another kid who can just rap. And it's to be able to, 
implement my my first generation experiences, implement my you know my culture where I come from. You know what I'm saying? Talking about some of that stuff in the music. I think that was why. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, like it's important for me to do that. For sure, for sure. That's real. Mm-hmm. That's important too. I, I like that. Now, at only what are you, 23? Yeah, 23. Just turned 23 in December. Well, happy belated, but like. How is it that you gravitated toward the MCs from a completely gener- different generation? Well, I feel like you, I don't know if, if anybody can relate on here, but you ever been like the young cousin or young little brother who always hang with his older cousins, mm-hmm. you know, his uncles and stuff. I was that growing up. Like I, I was hanging around my older, I was like eight years old, hanging around some of my cousins that was like 18. So I remember one, one uh, summer vividly, where I had, this is when PSPs first came out and my pops bought me a PSP. And I remember my cousins came down from Philly and they put all the J albums on my on my PSP, all the Wayne, all the Kanye, you know what I'm saying? All the classics and then be it around my dad a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they was the ones who implemented me all the like the MC periods and like, they was the ones telling me, oh, this is a metaphor, this is a simile. This is a double entendre. You hear these bars, you know what I'm wow. saying? So that just led me to when I do music, I wanted to make sure that like whatever I'm writing is intentional. Dope. So between that education and it being in your blood to begin with, it's something you always wanted to do. But what about like actually rhyming? Like how old were you when you wrote your first set of rhymes? Was it two years old with that photo? Um, No, it wasn't two years old. I remember my first rhyme was probably kindergarten. Um, yeah, it was kindergarten. I had like a little notebook and I used to draw like album covers, like for my albums. And then on the back, I would have like written track lists out. So it would be like featuring 50 Cent, featuring Lil Wayne, featuring DMX. Like I was that type of kid. But I think the first verse I remember writing that I recorded in a booth, I was like eight years old and it was like, it's young Ruben. I never stop rapping. You know, I keep a full house calling Bob Saget. Like, hey, Wiz, that I got that magic. I'm electricity shocking you with daddy. Some, some, something like that, bro. I was eight years old, but yeah, that was, that's one of the first few rounds that I remember right Double on time is an eight word full, <laughs> ho- full house and Bob Saget. That yeah, is fantastic. I was, big, I was a big Wayne fan, so I was just taking from anything I knew, you know what I'm saying, and moving forward. God, I love that, man. Now, the first time we met, you told me this incredible story about J. Cole, yeah. J. Cole's show in particular, right? Yeah, exactly. It was when you were in, you know, can you tell it again? Because it's just that dope. What you talking about when I, when I first met him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I skipped. So when I was 16, 17, actually, I skipped prom to go meet Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole in uh, North Carolina. So Ninth being my OG at the time, I had just started w- working with Ninth Heavy. Um, there was this girl that I was dating at the time, ironically, and she uh, cheated on me, man. So <laughs> then by the time prom happened, uh, I didn't have no prom date. But I remember like a week before, Ninth had texted me and was like, yo, Kendrick is coming in town for a TDE they having like their concert where, you know, that whole tour where they, yeah. it was all in the championship tour. So he was like, you know, he might slide to the studio after. I ain't hold no promises, but if you want to come, like, you know what I'm saying, you should pull up. So I'm, I was like, fuck prom. You know what I no mean? No prom. Yeah, I was like, forget prom. And then when I did, you know, I pulled up on Kendrick. He knew who I was. I met Cole that night. I met Schoolboy that night. I met Isaiah Rashad that night. Um, and those was like the catapults in my very, those are the very first times I met like some celebrities, but those was like, I, I feel like that night was like the catapult for years down the line for me doing Dreamville Fest, for me doing the boss tour now, even to the point of like, when I started to get stuff moving where Isaiah Rashad's hitting me, like, I remember you being that 16 year old kid who was backstage with ninth and stuff like that. But, you know, just really sowing those seeds. And that was like a big moment for me. And I feel like that turned me up in high school too, when I came back. For sure. No, no. Well, you mentioned Zay. Do you have a relationship with Cole these days? Yeah, yeah. So I actually, I actually got to chop it up with Cole in the studio in November. Um, I can't say what the sessions was for, but they was having some sessions, and I kind of they knew who I was, but I kind of bombarded their sessions. <laughs> so it was like one of one of my homies, Damani, called me and was like, "Yo." 
Cole is having some sessions in uh in uh in Atlanta. You should pull up. And I was like, I bet for sure. So I think this was around the same time that picture of Glorilla and Cole was like surfacing, but it was around okay. the same. And right. you know, I just pulled up, and obviously they knew who I was, so they just let me rock. But you know what I mean? I I, I seen Cole. I showed him the picture from when I was sixteen, and then he was like, "Bro, you was on the Dreamville Fest last year," and we we just chopped it up for a little bit. That's what's up. So you can't say what the session was, but it, either way, it won't be a fall off. No, it definitely won't be a fall off. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So, all right, man. So, <clears throat> with all that in your history, with ninth and everything like that, like, can you pinpoint a time that was your first taste of success in something that you personally created? Yeah, my first taste of success was I was 18 and I landed a song on Madden. That was like that was the most money I ever touched in my life. I had I had partners, like I was fresh in college. I was going to AT at the time. I'm walking past dorm rooms, people playing my song while they playing the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that that was like a big, 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 big moment for me. And a lot of people gravitated to that song. And like people was coming up to me like, bro, that's you on the game. Like when I would say my name, they'd be like, bro, I just heard your, your your shit on Madden. So I think that was like a big, big, big moment for me. And that helped, you know, just run my streams up and catapult a lot. That's dope. Yeah. So like what what school did you say you were going to at the time? I went to A&T uh, in Greensboro. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. So yeah. what led up to signing with The Rock and then signing with John Wick? Jamla came first. Jamla, Jamla, Jamla came when I was um, a teenager. I met Ninth when mm -hmm. I was 13, 14 years old. And I was rapping in my closet, like rapping on Apple headphones, putting it putting it on Dat Piff, whoop -de whoop And I remember that somebody tweeted him from Oakland. I just went to Oakland for the first time, like last week for tour. Yeah. But somebody from Oakland tweeted him was like, yo, I don't know this kid from nowhere but you need to check him out. He's fired. Knife just so happened to be bored on Twitter. It was like, I'm going to check him <laughs> out. So, you know, he checked me out. He was he he respected what he heard. And he was like, yo, I want you to come out here. I'm not going to promise you. I'm not going to promise you nothing, but I want to help you, you know, have opportunity to have a chance to at least record. Because he was like, yeah, your quality's trash. You can rap, but your quality's trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I, I bet. And, you know, I took that and ran with it. I sacrificed my summers. I sacrificed spring breaks, like, just to be over there. And then after that, you know, when I was 16, 17, he had saw, like, a video of mine on Instagram where I was freestyling. And he was like, bro, you sound about ready. So he told me to pull up for spring break. This is around the time Kendrick Dam was coming out. Okay. I, like, left my job, bro. I tried to beg my job for spring break off. They wouldn't give it to me <laughs> off. I left that night. I pulled up on him. He played me Duckworth. Uh, like a week before it came out, um, I recorded a whole mixtape in that week, and then he told me he wanted to sign me to his independent label. And so, you know, one thing I'll say about Nice, bro, like utmost respect to him because he's really somebody for the culture. Because one thing I'll say, like, I don't know if anybody ever said this on publicly, but being signed to Jamla, I never signed no paperwork. I never signed no paperwork. It was just, yo, I want to see you win. We're going to tell the world you're on Jamla. And then once we get to the majors and we sign a major deal, that's when we can do all the paperwork stuff. But everything, he's never took no money out of my pocket. Like, none of that. You know, he's if anything, he's put money in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? So then fast forward, I went off to college. And, you know, I was moving around, hustling, door dashing, you know, working jobs. Still, like, getting it off the ground. We was indie, so we was getting it off the muscle. I put out a music video and, you know, obviously rap was already signed to the rock knife, had his relationships and, you know, they have been watching, they have been watching, watching, watching just because, you know, I'm on their radar. They seen a video he put up and was like, yo, we need to help this kid. And that was when I was like 20, I was literally clocking out of my job at the time. And I got a call from knife, like, don't tell nobody, like the rock want to sign you and the rest is history, man. So I've been blessed to have like the right OGs in my corner. Sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Speaking of the OG, Ninth produced your latest single, Big Bank. Oh no, um, he, he actually didn't produce. That. He didn't. No, it was um, my boys, uh, Henny and Beloved. Beloved works a lot with uh, IDK's camp. Um, okay. I know, yeah, they got the credits wrong on that. I feel like everybody because uh, Knife is my OG. Anytime I put a song out, they just automatically put him in the credits. 
Sure. But yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, yeah, I, right, cool. yeah, yeah. But that's Big Bank is definitely the new record. Word. I love the vibe on that track. Like it's, it seems a little different, a little bit of a departure, but still very much you. Like what kind of what was the creative process behind that track? Well, I think if anything, I, I was trying to get closer to a core that people have not seen from me, but that is very much me. And the reason yeah. why I say that is because, you know, when we was in the studio working on that record, I was like the, the mastermind behind the production on there. Um, because I was sitting in there with my guys and he was like, yo, what um what 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 sound is you looking for? What are you what are you looking for? And I was like, Bro, how can we bring the South and Africa into one? You know what I mean? And and that's why you hear the B switch with the track right. on one part. And then you hear like the I'm a piano influence, like that was me really just trying to expand and show people that I am versatile and this is not just me just trying something just to try. Like, this is who I am. This is what I came up off of. Both of these worlds, how can we bring them together? Mm -hmm. You feel me? So Yeah. So that's the second time you spoke on, on that kind of being your goal, you know, it, creatively at the moment. Are there any other goals for your career at this point? Um, For me right now, it's just, I feel like I just want to continue to build my fan base, continue to build a solid core fan base, Pro continue to produce. I've been producing a lot for the homies, been sending, um, you know, beats all to like my dog, Marco Plus, Deontay Hitchcock, Damani, Chris Patrick, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, continuing to, you know, just build off of that and, and build this roof of this world, build third world up to the way that it needs to be built up. And, you know, I feel like, my my thing is, man, I feel like once people see see it in the flesh, they're going to feel it. And I've been seeing that a lot on this tour. So if I can continue to do that, I'm going to be straight. Sure. So you've always been a wordsmith with the bars, but, like, how long you been behind the boards on the production tip? Producing all my, all the, as mount as I can rap. Honestly, like, the stuff that Knife has heard from me when I was 13, I made those beats. I just kind of, oh, no like, doubt. sat and took yeah, I actually sat and took like a um a step back when I ended up like working with Knife because he's he's nice. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, at, and especially when I was younger, I was afraid to pay, play beats in front of him because I'm like, bro, you one of the goats. Like, how am I how am I gonna play my little rinky deep beats? In front of you? you know what I mean? But you know, um, I've been producing ever since, and they've made me more comfortable producing, and they've been telling me like, Yo, you need to get on your beats more. You need to like continue to continue to just aim at that. So I produced on Love is War in the outro and I'm gonna just continue to produce as you know time goes on because I think it's it's pivotal. Nice. What's a piece of production that you sent to one of the homies that you were just they came they brought it back and you were like, yeah, that's exactly what I was going um, for. Um Marco Plus actually sent me a record the like uh two months ago that he did um that he's trying to get somebody on that that's gonna be pretty big that if it does happen that that's going to be one of the ones for sure. And I feel like that's going to definitely catapult a lot of people wanting beats from me and stuff. That's what's but up. he bodied up. Yeah. yeah, word. So outside of that, earlier this year, you dropped the video for Fufu, right? Yes. Which you directed yourself. Yes. That, that's fire. What was that experience like? And is that something that you'll be doing more of in the future? Well, yeah. So I don't, and I haven't, I haven't said this either, but uh, a lot of my music videos, even before Fufu, I was very, very much hands on with, okay. but I didn't want to get in the way of like, you know, all the work that the directors do, you know what I mean? So I just will be, I'll take the, the, the back seat, like, all right, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I put this in there and this in there. Cause at the end of the day, it's not for that. You know what I'm saying? It's for the, it's for the art, you know? Sure. Um, but I think. You know, moving forward, I wanted to, you know, continue to stampede. And I'm, like, also telling myself, like, I'm talking to myself, I'm like, bro, if people don't know these things about you, they never going to, you know, mm -hmm. speak about it. They're never going to even come to you and ask, like, yo, I want you to direct the video. I want you to make a beat for me. Right. So I was like, this year I told myself, stop putting stuff on the back burner and, like, showcase who you are as a full-blown artist. Because I feel like everybody, and that's another thing of my goal, like, everybody knows I can rap. Everybody knows right. I can sit. But I don't think people really know how hands-on I am and intricate I am with the production, with the, the videos, with the cover arts, with the whole direction, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, 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 I take pride in that. So I think Fufu was me, especially with it being a record that's sentimental to me on the standpoint of me bringing both my cultures together, I was like, I got to stamp this and I got to show people that I'm more than just a rapper. I'm a full-blown artist. 
For sure. Sure. Now, being that multifaceted artist and really leaning into some of those other things outside of the bars at the moment, are you finding it being a challenge to to creatively switch gears like that at all? Or is it sort of just coming? Yeah, it is. It is a little bit challenging because no man, no man is an island, right? And granted, I'm blessed to have like a team who, you know, continues to help and keep me accountable. Um, and then also, you know, aid to what I my my visions. But it does, it's a little it's hard. You can't do all of it by yourself. You know what I mean? So it's like one day I might be like, yo, I got to, you know, like even for example, when I started telling people I made beats, like a lot of like my artist partners just hit me like, yo, send me something, send me something, send me something. But in the same time, I'm working on the EP. I'm working on getting it mixed. And I remember that week, it was just a lot because I'm going to the studio trying to mix my project. And then I'm going home trying to make beats for artists. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. But then I'm also trying to find a balance because I also need a, I need time outside of the music, you know. So it's 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 definitely challenging, but I think the reason why I do it is because I get frustrated when it don't come out how I wanted to come out, and only you know how you wanted to come out. You know what I'm saying? So, word. So, are you working on an EP? That EP now? Yes, the, the EP is actually done. The EP is okay. done. It's coming out April fifth. Yeah, April fifth. All 5th. right, getting um, close to rollout. Yeah, for real. About, about to be rollout time soon. I'm about to actually start rolling out next week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's called. I'm gonna just say the title is General Admission. On um, the reason why I call it General Admission, um, you know, one, as you see the shirt, Third World General. That's the, that's that's something that we've been carrying heavy. But you know, me being a uh, you know West African descent, one thing in West Africa is in Africa general. That's big, at least on the government side, on the war side, is generals. Um, and I'm not even trying to do that to be political, but I'm saying the third world general as in, you know, just trying to be a, sense, a source of inspiration for first generations, be a source of inspiration for my people back home who don't know, who don't, who haven't been here, who have inspiring dreams. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, I can be a general in that sense. Joe, so what, 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 in that sense, what, what impact do you feel that you've had? on your audience so far? Um, I feel like for me, the impact that I've had is that it's possible, honestly, it, that it's possible. You know, I feel like you, even when I'm like online and like I'm getting DMs from people from Liberia, like, yo, like you're making us in Liberia proud. You know, nobody has done this and nobody has done, like that's, that's what's made me feel like I bet, you know what I'm saying? That I'm doing, that I'm doing something right. I like that. I like that. So with your approach to music and creativity being the way it is, what are your thoughts on like the current state of hip hop? Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, I think hip hop right now, we're in a, we're in a transitional space and I feel like, I don't, honestly, I don't think it's the music. I just think it's the industry right now that you feel me that like, like I feel like we, is in the shambles because you know obviously we done gave the music to streaming platforms we done gave the music to social media but it's not the music i don't think it's the music i think it's a lot of great music out there like i said the names i just said the Mavis of the world the marco mm -hmm. plus chris patrick's the ben riley's like there's a lot of new upcomers that's going crazy i just think that the industry is trying to figure out how does it move from here and the industry is trying to figure it out especially from a standpoint of independence and labels you know what i mean and it's putting us in a like a, a funky place with you know the umg thing that just happened mm -hmm. with the, mm -hmm. the letting off people the, getting all the music off TikTok. we're in a very uncomfortable space and i think that is help that is translating to how the music is being perceived and in social media itself but i think there's a lot of great music out there you just got to search for it Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think hip hop culture as a whole can do to 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 get out of that un uncomfortable space? I think it's supporting the artists and really just supporting the artists and getting uncomfortable with it. I I, I know there was a big thing about the the Ye and Ty Dolla Sign thing for the um the new the Vultures two that's coming out and everybody's like why they not putting it on streaming platforms? But I think it's actually genius because it's like they gave y'all Vultures one on streaming platforms. Y'all ran it up. It don't went number one. You know what I'm saying? And then now it's like, all right, bet we're about to try to shift the culture because Kanye does have the ability to shift the culture. It's like, no, let's put the, the music back into the artist's hands. And I think it's just continuing to show up for the artists, whether it's a show, whether it's merch, 
whether it's, you know, getting in these discords and getting in these communities and actually, you know, cutting out the middleman when we work with the artists at times, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I like that. So you got anything lined up to work with anyone in particular on general admission or are you just rolling dolo? Uh, uh, yes, I got some features on there. Um, I'm going to surprise everybody. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till the track list is announced. For sure, for sure. No doubt. Well, who would you like to work with the most that you haven't yet? <clears throat> Uh, I would love to work with Smino. Smino's hard. Kenny mm. Mason's hard. Mm -hmm. Kid obviously is hard. Um, producer wise, I would love to work with Overcast, um, Benny X. Um, mm. Who else? Let me think. I feel like I'm missing a few names. Um, there's a that Jordan Ward is crazy. Me and Jordan Ward have been talking back and forth about okay. you know possibly doing some stuff. So. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a press him about that for sure. All right. but Checking yeah, for all that. Those, those are some names. Uh, Joey too. Me and Joey, me and Joey badass been talking about doing a record together. Me and Benny been talking about doing a record together. So, you know, a lot of that's going to be coming real soon. I like that. Looking forward to that. Now, one thing I noticed on your IG bio, right? Yeah. You list yourself as a soldier and a protector. Yeah. What, what does that stand? statement mean to you? Well, that comes from the name that my grandma gave me. That's like my Liberian name that she says for me. She don't never call me Ruben. She called me Seth Lincoln. And that comes from my um my great grandfather who was a slave, actually in the slave and got sent back to, who was actually a slave who got sent back to Liberia. His name was Abraham Lincoln Vincent. When he went to Liberia, he changed his name to Seth. And his first name is Seth. So she always calls me Seth. Seth means soldier and protector. So, you know, I think I just I just took that and ran with it. All right. No doubt. Now, you're clearly a very passionate person, right? So, like, what words would you use to describe your motivation to move forward or passion, if you will? Mm, like a quote? Or just, like, in, in general, what, what, what would you describe? How, what words would you use to describe what keeps you motivated? Um, I think it's generation. Generational is a big word that keeps me motivated. Being resilient, um, being ambitious, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, we're not, we don't choose the life that we come into when we're born, but we choose the decisions that we make once we are on this earth and we have the knowledge and the sense to make decisions, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, my goal is just to continue to live our purpose. I don't live for, I don't live for the, I don't do this for money. You know, granted, I want to make a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to make a lot of money, but my goal is to continue to push the purpose of, you know, redirecting where my family's bloodline has went, what they have went through, and continue to be a, a catapult for the generations after me. You know what I'm saying? So That's real. Yeah. That's real. All right, what would you say is the nicest thing you've done for yourself in your career? Like, not not like career-wise but like just the nicest thing you've done for yourself since you started finding success sure the nicest thing i did for myself was pay my taxes bro for real <laughs> yeah man taxes ain't no joke that's important but i and, and don't get caught up like that so that's important facts. facts that's probably the nicest thing anybody who are in a business can do for themselves for sure no doubt all right what advice would you give to young artists producers creators whatever who are just looking to get into this thing it's going to be a lot of doubters there's going to be a lot of people who's going to try to steer you from the direction that you're trying to go to um but you got to stand you got to stand on what you're standing on if you don't stand for something you're going to fall for anything these motherfuckers tell you bro you know what i'm saying i done been around i done been moving around for a little bit so, you know, I done seen people, I done had people try to tell me that what I'm doing ain't going to work, what this ain't going to do, no, even before I even got to this point, you know what I'm saying? Even the way, the way that I got signed, the person, my homies was telling me it wasn't going to work. You know what I'm saying? We got trolls all in this comments, but you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to drown out the noise, man. You got to just stand on what you stand on and keep pushing because, you know, it's going to take a little bit and it's patience. This ain't, this ain't no overnight thing, but if you really got something that's going to stand, you know what I'm saying? It's going. It's going to take a. It's going to take its time, but the the reward is going to be there. Man, solid advice from one Ruben Vincent. Yo, is there anything you'd like to share with the Double XL audience? Third world in this big man. You already know what's going on, man. Fufu out now, Big Bank out now. Y'all come see me on this Boz tour, man. I promise you, it's going to be one of the best shows you've ever seen.
For sure. Why don't you go ahead and throw out your social info so people can follow you? Yeah, y'all follow me on the gram. That's Ruben Vincent. That's R E U B E N B I N C E N T. My Twitter's the same thing with an underscore. I see people in here commenting, Thorough World. Shout out to Thorough World. We in the building. Yeah, man, we here, man. We is here, man, and we not leaving. So all y'all trolls, y'all can get out the fucking way. Love that. Yo, check out Ruben Vincent streaming on all platforms. Check out uh, General Admission when it drops in April. Definitely check him on tour out with Boss this very moment. Uh, congrats again on all the success, my guy. Thank you for joining me. No. And looking forward to talking to you again in the future. Appreciate it, man. See you soon. Be good out there. All right, bro. Peace.